Okay, here's another increment in showing that preterism is totally retarded. There are three basic promises to Abraham which are encapsulated in flagship passages of Scripture, Genesis 12, 15, and 17. We just saw chapter 17. Now we're going back to Genesis 12 where God first gives this to Abraham. He's still called Abraham at that point. He's 75 years old. He's telling him to leave Ur of the Chaldees, and historically, when you look that up, you find out it was just before Ur of the Chaldees was overrun. So he delivered Abram out from an, an impending historical disaster, takes his family with him. And of course, Genesis 11 had been the flood, because the, a long story that I, I, I've already covered elsewhere. And that is piggybacked on Genesis 5, because God's giving you a timeline. But he's doing it in a clever way because he's he doesn't want it to just be dry. He wants you to understand what he's trying to say, and what he's trying to say is a timeline. Okay, and I've covered that in my you know seven other video playlists. So if you're not familiar with it, I guess you're going to have to start there. But I want to focus here. I'm just looking at the simple question of proving that anybody who doesn't believe in a pre-trib rapture is retarded, and you have to really ask yourself maybe you should avoid them. I'm dead serious about this. Look at this. I will make you a great nation. I will make your name great. You shall be a blessing. And what? All the families of the earth will be blessed. Now when you read the rest of the Bible, you find out what he means by this. What he means by this is that the Savior is going to be one of Abraham's descendants. Okay? But this is the first time he gets this promise. And he was 75 years old at that time. He had no kids. So he takes his wife, his nephew, everything. And his family goes with him, his dad and all that. Except that Nahor remains behind. Okay. And what does he say? He gets into Sechem. That's where um, Jacob was going to end up staying when he came back. He says, to your descendants I will give this land. Sechem, of course, is in what we call Israel today. Duh. East of Bethel, that's another town in Israel today. Okay? Now, the key promise behind this is right here, baby. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. Now, we just explained... Here's the land, and it's the descendants, and they're descendants of who? Abram. He's talking physical descendants here. That's the Jews, honey. Like it or lump it any way you want. Those are his descendants. I will bless those who bless you, and those who curse you, I will curse. And we saw in Genesis 17 that the blessing goes through Isaac, not Ishmael. Well, you can suspect that, well, you know, isn't there at least some benefit to Ishmael? Well, yeah, but the promise goes through Isaac. That's what Paul's talking about in Romans 9. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. You get that. So if you want to curse the Jews, or deny them something God promised them, you are going to be cursed. End of story. And how does God curse you the most? By leaving you to your own devices. By you being ignorant about scripture. I mean, you have to be completely unable to read the Bible to not be able to read these two sentences right here. Something's wrong with some, See, look, to your descendants, we saw in Genesis 17, it's a, it lasts forever. It's not a replacement. There's not somebody else going to go in and have that land. It's to the descendants of Abraham, to the Jews. And anybody who curses them, God will curse. And what's the best and hardest way for him to curse you? To make you unable to read the Bible. And anybody who's a preterist or doesn't believe in pre-trib rapture proves he can't read even these verses.
which a five-year-old could read and understand. Oh, but there's more. This is just the end of this section. I'm going to leave you to read the rest of it on your own. But I wanted to focus you on this, this, to Abram, his descendants, the land, and this. Because everybody who disbelieves in pre-trib rapture is proving unable to read these verses. And therefore, they are carnal. But there's more, lots more. Coming up.